Hey guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. We're quickly coming to the end of our fabric postcard how-to series. I've been having a lot of fun making different ones and trying out different styles, and I still have a ton more I'd love to make. I know a few of you have also tried them out and have been having fun. This is going to be the last video in our actual how to make these. Today I'm going to show you the different ways that I have seen and have tried on how to take the postcard parts and add it to your actual fabric postcard version and make sure these are all connected so that we can put it in the mail. I've watched some other videos on how people finish these off. I have a few ideas of my own and I've also mailed these out before several years ago so there are a couple different things I do know and I'm sure you guys might find other ways to finish them off yourself. I'm going to show you from the simple simple version to maybe if you want to get a little more detailed and make more of an art card versus just a regular postcard. I did want to say when you first start making these this part of it you can kind of really figure out easily and since you already know how basically quilting and sewing how that goes like I said this part is is relatively very easy we all kind of know how to do this already and we're just using our knowledge in a different format and making it smaller versus a larger quilt. When it comes to the finishing techniques you're not really sure how you're going to want to do it and how it's going to look and the way you do it and the way your sewing machine works so my recommendation is maybe not make your most fancy cards at first maybe stick with some of the ones that are just made from the fabric simple scraps and stuff like that you wouldn't want to go through and make spend hours making a really in-depth fancy card with a lot of maybe beadwork or embroidery or handwork and quilting on it to do a finishing technique and then you feel really sad because it's maybe a little bit messier or it didn't actually turn out the way you want and it didn't fit with your theme so if you just start with something simple and basic, if something happens, then it's, it, you're not going to feel as bad. You can still use it. You can hang it up in your room for decoration. Or if it's really that bad, you can go ahead and toss it. But if you're using, let's say you're just using something simple like the turtles, right? If you do a finishing technique that you don't quite like, it's not going to be but a quarter of an inch into your edges. So you could always just trim off the parts you don't like. Your card will be a little bit smaller, but it's still going to be okay and it's still going to be mailable. Because remember, no matter what size this card comes, you don't have to mail it just as is. Like that big Texas one I got, there's no way that would have gone through the mail regularly, but you can put it in an envelope and mail it out that way. So no matter how it turns out and what size it is, you can always put it in an envelope. So try your techniques on a basic card first. Get some little bit of practice. If you don't like it, you can just trim it off. I know from past experience it's really it's really heartbreaking when you put a lot of time and effort and you've got just this amount of fabric and you don't have any extra and you make something like a quilt or something or the postcards and the last bit of a technique that you do it just seems to mess up the whole project it's very very heartbreaking so we're gonna go from some really easy stuff up to none of it's really complicated but if you just want the simple quick way out I'm gonna show you that and if you want to do a little extra techniques on it we'll do that also don't forget, I have already showed you how to do the single fold bias binding on these. I'm going to go ahead and put a link up in the iCard for you so you can watch that video if you want. Personally, this is not, I won't be doing this for my cards. While it does hold it all off and it frames it nicely, for this style cards that I've been making here, I don't want to have an actual binding along it like this. Now, if I were to make one that was more of a picture, like a nice scene or something, then I might want to put a binding on it as an actual framework, but I'd rather just take the postcard and have it finished and then put it in a frame and let that be the framing versus the binding. But it's totally up to you on however you want to finish it. So let's go ahead on over to the sewing machine and I'll show you some different techniques. Ooh, those are hard words. Okay, I'm going to use my little flag card or one of my flag cards to show you the simplest method. I have a little blue cardstock on the back. I have loaded my sewing machine up with my thread and my bobbin. I'm using gray just because I know it's going to blend in well with all the colors. I could use 
the blue or the red have a contrast or the white but I just kind of like to use a nice uh, light to medium gray and it just tends to blend in you can use the clover clips to hold your card together I usually just wing it if my card sticks out or my fabric postcard part sticks out I'll just trim it up afterwards all right so let's get on to this, this is going to be like I said the easiest method all I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch all around it. I'm going to make sure these two cards are together. And then I'm just going to go ahead and about an eighth of an inch, I'm just going to stitch all around. Now, as you can see, this card already has all kinds of fraying, so I don't mind the frayed look. If I just put it around and I do a little top stitch right around the whole thing, all of it. Now, we're not flipping this card or anything, so we're going to do it all around all four sides. It's going to allow this edges to still fray. So if you don't want your edges to fray and you want something like say maybe you're going to give it to a kid that's going to last a while, you're going to have to do a different treatment on the edges. But we're just going to do all the way around. Simple, simple. So I just have my regular foot on. I have my needle over to the left so it can easily do an eighth of an inch uh, for the top stitching for me. I'm going to go ahead and start... So I'm going to probably start somewhere here along the bottom. I don't know. I, I never, I usually don't start along the top because I, it always feels like that's where your eye is going to catch. I might start over here on the side. I, I think maybe I'll start on the side. Sometimes when I get around and my lines don't always match up perfectly. I think I'm going to go ahead and use my own advice and add just a couple clips. Just to make sure things don't get too far out of kilter here. All right, so then I'm just gonna stitch down here. When I hit the corner, I'm just gonna go ahead and pivot. I could come all the way off the edge and then start again, but then I have to deal with the back stitching and all the extra threads here on the end. So I'm just gonna try to get down close to about an eighth of an inch. I'll probably try to follow this line right along the bottom where I stitched this uh, red stripe on, just to cut back on the extra amount of thread that's on the card. Trim off my thread so I don't get myself tangled up. And yes, I'm saving my threads too, so hopefully after this project I might have some more colorful ones in there. going through I'm not like pushing it and forcing it but I'm holding just a slightest amount of pressure here to make sure it's taking everything through and working its way nicely I'll do a little back stitch Trim my threads. And there you go. Just a simple line all the way around. It's going to hold the card perfectly in place. All three pieces are together. If you'd have wanted to, you could have taken, and on the back of this, you could have put some fusible on this, and then you could have ironed it and fused it to the card. So that you know that they were all three are going to stay together nicely. But I found that this works pretty good. As long as you don't shorten your stitch length, you could always go a little bit longer if you wanted to make sure that the cards are going to stay together and you're not perforating anything. But there's a simple method number one. Now, as you're going through that pro this process of figuring out what you want to use, it'd be a really good idea to keep some scrap fabric around just to touch out, test out the different stitches on your sewing machine. I'm going to go ahead and do Stormtroopers next. I do have a dark blue card that I can put on the back of this, but I think I'm going to go a little bit bright and crazy and pick an orange one. I don't always match the back of my quilt fabrics to the front of my quilt, 
so I don't have a problem not batching, matching the back of my fabric postcard to the front. Plus, if you're going to hang it up or put it in a frame, this is all you're going to see. So it's kind of like, it's kind of nice to have that little bit extra that's a secret that you're hiding back there. Now for this one, I'm going to go ahead, I still have that gray in my machine. So I chose this card specifically so I didn't have to change my thread. I am going to go ahead and do a satin stitch all around the outside. Now, this is one of my least favorite. It uses a lot of thread, and it takes the longest amount of time, in my opinion. So I'm just going to take my little scrap of fabric, and I'm going to test out my satin stitch to see uh, the exact uh, depth and length and width and everything that I need. Okay, so I just went ahead and tested it, and I went ahead and made my length, my, my width this way a little bit more, and I made my length a little bit shorter so it was a little bit tighter. You can still see the color of the postcard underneath. So most people who do this recommend to do it a second time around, two passes, which is one of the reasons why it takes so much time and the extra bit of thread. And there you go. I think with a darker thread, it tends to cover up better. I have a little bit extra here. I can always trim this off. But when you're using a satin stitch around like this, you definitely shouldn't have to worry at all about it fraying. This is what it looks like from the back. Like I said, this is not my favorite. But many people, this is the way they finish them and they love it. I don't have a serger. But I do have this edging foot and it does basically the same thing. It's very similar to the satin stitch and it does the same thing similar to the serging stitch where it has that straight line and then the thread that wraps around. So I'm going to go ahead and try that on this card because I thought with all the little railroad track zipper tracks I have on here, I'm going to put this around here and see what that looks like. And I decided to use a dark purple thread for it. help if I put a card on the back though right I don't have any purple card stock but I do have some pink and there's some pink in here so I will use that see every now and then I can match right here we go Now, just like the satin stitch, I had to go around that twice. 
it's going to, you're still, I use this when I make, like, um, pajama pants and shorts and stuff. You use this along the seam like you would a serger. It just overcasts it to keep everything from fraying. So this will stop it from fraying, but I don't think it has the best look that I'm looking for, but it is an option. Now you're gonna have a lot of different fancy stitches on most sewing machines. So it's a good idea to maybe make some bookmarks to test it out on, just to see how the different uh, stitches look when you're using it with your actual whatever backing you're using, whether you're using the cardstock or the index card, which is thinner than this material or actual fabric. Now you're gonna get a totally different look if you're using fabric. If you're using fabric for the backing, you're definitely going to want to fuse it to the rest of your card to hold it all together. So I'm going to test out a couple different stitches on my machine, then I'm going to meet you back over at the table and we're going to talk about some other options. I'm back! So I went ahead and did a few different treatments, styles to finishing these off. Now while I did play with some of the stitches on my scrap paper, it seems like once I put it on these postcards, it, it kind of changed it up just a little bit. Some of them where they look distinctly different on my sewing machine, once I put them on the card, they ended up looking the same. So let's see some of the things that I did. Okay, I put black on this one so you really can't see. I'm gonna show you on the back. This is actually a buttonhole stitch. As you can see, it's got the line that goes across and then it, you know, jags in to grab it. So I thought, well, let me try a buttonhole stitch, see what that looks like. I think that works really well. You're still going to have a little bit of fraying on it as you normally would. You could try to wrap the edge over when you're doing a stitch, but I found it easier just to follow along the edge and let it go like that. I, I kind of like when they fray for certain cards. Now it's gonna really, like I said, it's gonna depend on what the front of your card looks like, how you're gonna wanna treat everything and what you're gonna be using for your materials. So that one worked out okay. And then for my crabbies here, I went ahead and I used a tan and I went with this little uh, wavy scallop stitch. You can see that they don't all come out to the same size. Sometimes it's a little bit harder for it to go through the machine and sometimes you know, it dragged a little bit. But that's the reason why I said just use your plain simple fabrics letting it do all the talking for you and design. Because you can kind of get a feel for the way the things are going and how they're gonna look. Now Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh has this, it's kind of like a little bit of a heartbeat going. This is one of the ones where it looked different on my machine but it ended up looking the same as another one. But that worked really well because it kind of gives you the zigzag look. And once again, it doesn't go over the edge, so there will be fraying. But if you use fusible underneath this whole card, it's gonna help a little bit on the fraying. Now, if it was just like you and I and we're just displaying it in our craft room, you're not gonna have to worry about it. It's The fusible will be enough to stop it from fraying. But if you were gonna give this to like a three-year-old or a five-year-old, they're really gonna be playing with it a lot. Chances are that the edges are gonna fray. See, here's another one. This one was different, but it still ended up looking a little bit like the heartbeats. It does have a distinct where it has a center here, but otherwise it's still basically the same. Now this stitch is the same stitch as this one that I used for these cards. And since it's not holding two together, you know, it has a little channel it looks like, but this works really well also. It's going to hold that down nicely, but like I said, you're going to have some fraying. Now as you see, sometimes my fabric got sucked in. If I'm worried about this, I can take that blue Sharpie or maybe some watercolor paint and just go ahead and color that in. Here's another form of the heartbeat that I used for little Miss Minnie. You see, I said they're very distinctive on my sewing machine, but once I started sewing them on here, because of the type of material I'm using, it changed up the way it looked. This was actually a bunch of X's, but it just came out looking like a satin stitch. 
This was a lot easier than the satin stitch. It didn't pull off as much thread, but I did have to go around twice to give enough coverage. The double satin stitch that we already saw. And this one is actually the same as this one, but I just went around once. Close up of the overcast. I really thought this one was going to be my favorite. I use this on so many things. I really honestly thought that this was going to be the one. I thought it was either going to be this one or this one. This one, I, it's, it's a stitch that I use when I'm doing applique. It has a whole bunch of X's and it has a little bit of a, a line underneath and up at the top. So actually like a Roman numeral 10. But it, when I put it on here, the little parts on the bottom just basically got sucked into the card and that's it, they're gone. I think most of my simple cards like this are just going to be done with the top stitching around the edge, just enough to hold it in. I don't think you really need much more than that. So like I said, just try and play with your machine and see all the different things it can do. Like I said, make some, uh, I really think making some simple ones like this with just the basic fabric, maybe some Christmas ones for Christmas cards, because if you decide to use these for Christmas cards, let's face it, most people probably aren't going to save it. So if you just have some basic Christmas fabric, you can practice all the little different techniques of going around and around and see which ones you like. I'm just gonna use this one as an example. Now, I haven't stitched these other techniques because for the cards I made, I don't think that these are appropriate for them. It's going to be depending on the types of cards. But you can take a piece of ribbon. I know this one's not ironed, it's from one of those um, uh, I think it was like a fat quarter package. You could put your ribbon, you could put some a little strip of adhesive because you can either cut it thin or buy a little roll. And you can always use your ribbon and that would definitely cover up the sides. What I would do here is I would cut it even, stitch the top and the bottom, and then I would come back and do the two sides. You can choose to fold the edge over a little bit so you have a nice tidy end here. And I think that would work really well on some cards, depending on the card and depending on the ribbon. I saw where someone used lace. I thought that was really pretty. I think you would probably need to either pin this down or use a glue stick. But if you were using like some old tan doilies or some other types of uh, lace ribbon on here, then you can just fold this over and the same thing with the ribbon. You would do two sides first, then tuck over the edge, then tuck over the edge. You could try to bind it, but I think it's just gonna be easier to do the top and the bottom and then the two sides separately. But if you were doing an old fashioned card, I think that would be very pretty. Definitely need to use some pins or clips you couldn't use the adhesive, the iron-on adhesive, or even a glue stick because it would come right through all the lace bits. That would also be very pretty just on a card. This would be so nice, uh, wedding invitations or thank you cards from a wedding. Now I have some packaged binding. I, I've been received, a few years ago, someone gave me a container and it had a whole bunch of old supplies in it. And I like to pick up things like this at the thrift store too. Something, you never just know when you're gonna be able to use this. The type of material it is, you can almost use this as a ribbon. But if you have some of the prepackaged binding, you could, you can trim it smaller. Or if you have some smaller ones, I don't know what sizes they come in. But that would go right over the card and that would cover up your edge and you wouldn't have to worry about any type of fraying. What I think I would wanna do is I would probably cut this into a smaller one. I think if you use just this one section, you can put some adhesive in that section. And then that would just lay over nicely on your card and you can just iron that down. And then you can just follow along with it and you can just use a straight stitch or you can use a buttonhole or a zigzag or any decorative stitch on there. 
it would guarantee that this would hold everything together and you would not have any fraying. I love Rick Rack. Now this isn't gonna help you from the fraying if you're using this little micro Rick Rack, but you could add this along to the edge and then just do your top stitching and it would be a nice decorative stitch. You would just have to either cut your corners or you'd have to fold them a little just manipulate it to go around the corner. I think that would make a nice little frame to that. This was another one of the Rick Racks. This was in a container that was given to me. Someone had obviously already put it on something and it's been removed. But if you had this larger Rick Rack, you could put it over and just fold it over and then stitch it down and you'd have this little bit loose that could be another type of treatment. So really your options are once again, it's all about what you have or what you need to go to the store and buy. As you guys know already, I just kind of try to find things that I have around the house and use those. So just have fun with it. Be creative. Kind of test your boundaries a little. Stretch your imagination. And I'm sure if you start looking at things you have in your craft room already, you might find something that will work for this. So that really wraps up the actual making of the postcards. We could be here all year long showing different types every week and all the different styles you can make, but I want you guys to go ahead and just, just think outside the box. It's perfectly okay to go on Pinterest and look at other fabric postcards or look at little mini quilts and art quilts and get some ideas from that because there's no way you're never gonna actually copy it 100% because you can't see, you don't know what their supplies are and how they actually made it. You're just gonna take a theme like, ooh, a beach theme or a mountain theme and just run with it. Now you're not gonna see another Sew With Me video until next Friday because they normally come out on Fridays. And at that point, I will be discussing with you all about mailing them. I'm gonna go to the post office this week I'm going to take I'm going to take a whole bunch of these up and I'm going to go ahead and try to mail them and try different ways to see which works. Talk to the uh, post office guy to see him, you know what the rules and regulations are and if any tips and tricks he can give us and then I'll come back and I'll make a video about it so we'll all know together. I want to try sending these all over all over the country to different states and I'd like to try to send some uh, overseas too to see what the rules are and regulations are for that. So if I already have your address, you never know, you might be one of the lucky ones that get one of the fabric postcards. Okay guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you've enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like it below. And if you're kind of interested to see what other things I might start crafting and what other trouble I can get myself into, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you ring that little bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I put up a new video. You have a great week. Bye.